Today's guest on the Winning Teams podcast is Lindsay Kaplan. Now, Lindsay, who hails from San Francisco, is an expert in the subject matter of gatherings. Now, this is just so important to any leader, any business owner who really, really needs to get their people together, whether it is their staff, whether they're, they're, they're their customers, but whatever group, to actually really convey a message and get a message across. But, you know, we talk about it, but we actually understand that it's not as simple to actually make this work. And we've all seen plenty of, you know, situations and uh, opportunities to get people together and then blow it for lack of the correct uh, preparation. And this really is what Lindsay is talking about, how you prepare yourself, how you prepare the content, what are the things you really need to, to reflect upon in order to make sure that you hit the home run when it comes to this particular gathering. And this is becoming more and more important in, in organizations because the need for openness, transparency, and effective communication is just kind of ramping up higher and higher. For any leader, it's a skill they really must develop and a very specific and particular skill that needs to be, to be developed. So listening to Lindsay and you really would get some very, very good tips, how to structure it, how to prepare yourself, how to deliver it, and, and what are the things you need to be really focused in on in terms of the environment, environment to actually make it an effective gathering. So. If you want to get more podcasts with lots of other tips and strategies from some great people that we've had on the podcast, then go to our website, www.johnmurphyinternational.com, and you will find it there. You will also, on the site, be able to download the book, The 10 Key Traits of Top Business Leaders, uh, which was an Amazon bestseller for me uh, a year or so ago. So please sit back and listen to Lindsay really go to iTunes as well. And if you like it, then give us a good review because that really helps for us to extend the message. But sit back and listen to this really interesting interview with Lindsay Kaplan. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. I know it's very early in your part of the world in San Francisco. It's a bit later in the day for me, but thank you for being up and around and uh, willing to share your knowledge and your expertise with us. My pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. I'm really fascinated in terms of, I mean, your career is really interesting, but one of the things that you, you were a comedy writer and for, you know, you know, really well-known shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm and Mal Malcolm in the Middle. So how do you go from being a very successful comedy writer to being an organizational psychologist? Wow. Well, first I'm like very successful. Hmm. That's up for debate, but we will <laughs> talk about that another time. Yeah, it's interesting. I have always been very interested in how people get from A to B, right? So how they change and what kind of experiences they need to have and who they have to meet and what their hero's journey is. And along the way of being a writer, I kind of decided I wanted to help people do that in real life and help people develop in real life instead of characters on a page. And it took me about six or seven years to figure that out. But once I realized there was someone behind the scenes scripting these leadership development classes or workshops or retreats, I realized there was a lot of connection in my previous career. And I wanted to use kind of those same empathy and observation muscles to put them to use in a different way. So yeah, it, it seems a little bit odd, but they're actually pretty connected. All right. Okay. No, it's really, it's really interesting. I mean, I think that the, the skill in comedy, the skill in comedy writing, I think is, is quite extraordinary. And, you know, and I, I suppose so much of that is about storytelling um, as well. And, and of course, that is an important part when you come into uh, speaking to groups. Just curious, do you, do, before you get into actually the gatherings and the groups, do you believe that we are created to gather? I would hope so. I think we are inherently social creatures who want to be together. And, you know, no matter kind of our upbringing or beliefs or routines, we're never completely alone. We're always in some sort of gathering. So yes, I think we're 
in some ways made for it and crave it and desire it. And, and how important then is alone time? Well, I think for some of us, it's more important than, than others in a lot of ways, but I think it's also crucial. So it's not, we are always together and we are always gathering. It's a yin and yang effect and they can fuel each other. I think in a lot of ways, you need both to survive mm. and to thrive and to have time to sort of step away from the gathering and process it and come back to it. Maybe and better, more recharged. Yeah, and when you know, if you think about the the, the audience that 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 listens to this podcast, which is primarily the you know kind of um, CEOs, leaders in and in, in organizations and their own businesses, and you know the gatherings, how can leaders kind of use gatherings to really engage their people? What are the things they need to do? Because so many times, I mean, I've seen it in in my own work with companies where. You know, groups of people are brought together for, you know, a presentation or for, you know, outlining a strategy or whatever it may be. And I sometimes feel that so many times these opportunities are missed to actually really kind of get the, the message to land. What do you, when you're working with leaders, how do you get them to actually optimize the opportunity that these gatherings present? Yeah, that's a great question. And I would agree with you that they... Uh, I kind of misused um, as, and they're very popular as a tool. I think that's the key word, right? Gatherings are in some ways the most common tool that we reach for to spark movement or change in other people because we think they're very efficient. I will gather people in a room and I will tell them a message and then they'll be bought in. It makes a lot of sense, I think, to a lot of us. But then we invest this time and money and energy and wonder why the message doesn't land or doesn't stick and we find we have to repeat ourselves. And that's town halls, workshops, all hands, classes. It's just what we do in, in companies all the time. I think the place to start often with people is content. What do we want to share? What slides do we need? Uh, what are we going to say? They start information first. And the first piece of advice I give people is actually to start with the outcome. So start with the end in mind, right? So if we go back to my screenwriting days, what happens at the end of the movie? <laughs> Okay. And then what kind of experience do we have to create in order for that to happen? So the question is about outcome. What do I want people to know or do or be at the end of this gathering? And then we work on creating, you know, the content as a later step, but it's not the first one. That's one of the key coaching uh, moments I give. Okay. And, you know, if you look at the, you know, the, the, the different generations, because when you're, when you've got a gathering, the chances are you've got, you know, it's across a number of generations. And those generations have got a very different preference in terms of, of the way of being communicated to and being engaged with it and engaging with, with that communication. How do you coach the leader, the presenter to actually manage across those expectations? Well, I'm curious just you know, in, in your experience too, what do you think some of those different requirements are across generations? Well, I, I think, so when I started to work, when I went, which is a long time ago, when I started to work, I went in and you kind of, you sat at a desk and you did what you were told. I mean, that's, I know that's a bit of extreme to actually put it that way, but I mean, that's not far from the truth. But now there's not that kind of formality about sitting at desks. There are different workspaces. There are casual spaces. There are open spaces. There are people go and they're not necessarily sitting at their desk and, you know, doing what looks like work. It tends to be kind of sitting, are they actually working? So it's very different. So they're receiving information in different ways and they're engaging with information in, in different ways. I find some of the challenges for, for many leaders is that, because they don't come, they come from a very specific generation, which may be a bit older, just managing that kind of new generation coming in with this different way of doing things is a bit of a challenge. And I'm just wondering, is the same thing play out when you're communicating in gatherings? What I'm hearing is, I think the question is, how do I engage people, right? Knowing mm -hmm. that the work is now a bit more fluid um, or a bit more transient and people have different needs that maybe they always had, but weren't kind of expressed before potentially. And I, I think what's underneath that gets to the kind of the question we started with is, you know, why do we gather or do we need it or do we do it all the time? And it stems from the, the desire to connect, right? And, and largely to belong. So I think if we go to that core need, that human place of what we all want, what we all need, it takes some of these differences away and we can think about ways to fuel that connection in the way that we gather. And and that goes back to the, the coaching piece I mentioned, right? Which is sort of my core hypothesis or thesis is that we're not 
really gathering for content because we can get that anywhere, especially now, right? We can email it around, we can watch a webinar. That's not, that's not what we're paying for in a lot of ways. What we really want when we gather is connection. And we do that, we fuel that connection by creating the conditions in the room for that to be possible. And that's where I think people can put more of their effort and what people are, are, are wanting more of these days because the content is just available to them whenever they want it. Yeah. So, so talk to me about the conditions. So let's play out. I'm, I'm going to bring together my, you know, the hundred people in my division uh, next week. And, you know, because I want to outline a new strategy. If you were coaching me that, for that, what would you say that, okay, so these are the things that you need to really pay attention to. Uh, what are the things that, I would, that you would be coaching me to pay attention to? Let's go back to what you described as kind of the presenting problem, right? Which is, I want to bring 100 people together to outline the strategy. Is that right? Yeah. That's the goal. So if that's the goal, what I hear from that in your outcome is you want to inform people, right? That's sort of what I hear in terms of what your desire is, what you want people to do differently. And there's four different outcomes that people might choose. So inform is one of them. Another would be compliance. I just want people to kind of do what they're told. Another would be to entertain people. And a fourth would be to engage. And I think most people want engagement. That's kind of what we want for people to take up a message as our own, for them to be bought in, to have ownership. But we tend to kind of stop at these other outcomes because we don't necessarily know that A, that there's this disconnect or that, uh, or how to actually engage. So if you said to me, yes, inform is the correct outcome, then we would sort of design your gathering or your change effort with that outcome in mind. Sort of, should we agree for the, for the case of this example that inform is what you want? Yeah, I mean, I think that in, if you take that example, yes, one would be inform, but you want, to walk, you want them to walk away engaged with the information that you've shared with them. Yes, meaning that they're excited about your strategy exactly. and they're going to go, yeah, they're going to execute on it and be excited. Yeah. Okay, so then, then what you want, uh, what I'm hearing is you want them to be engaged. So if that's the case, that's what we would call a pull and personalized gathering. And we can get into that more later, perhaps. But what this means is that you're focusing on five key conditions. So maybe, John, I'll outline those conditions, and then we can talk about kind of an example. Yeah. And when I'm, when I'm doing this for your listeners, it might be helpful to think about the, the gatherings or the change efforts where you've been super engaged or bought in and see if these conditions match for you. Uh, my hope is that they do. So there's five. The first is that your audience or your employees feel seen and recognized. So, you know, I, as the CEO, I want to share my strategy, but what are the needs of the people in the audience? What do they actually care about? What's urgent for them? What's their burning platform? So if I don't know what they care about, the message isn't going to be as engaging or, as, or land as much. So that's one. Uh, two is to make it feel like it was made just for them. So I may have delivered this strategy message a hundred times, but how do I make it feel in the moment and specific to that one group of people? The third is to give them ownership. So to give them some skin in the game or give them a role, basically to show your employees that they are integral to the success of that strategy. So it's not my strategy as a CEO, it's our strategy as a whole. And the fourth is to connect to a universal concept. So we were talking about core needs of connection. I'd say that's kind of a universal concept of what we all need, what we all ascribe to or, or need. This is where kind of we ask people to zoom out. So yeah, the gathering is about a strategy, but what's it really about? <laughs> what is this thing that we can all nod our head about in the room that gets us all on the same page? So it might be a metaphor or emotion, something that sort of brings that group together in one moment in time. And then the fifth is the one that I spend the most time coaching people on, which is to give people agency and choice. Another way to say this is to treat people like adults because they are. So one of the easiest ways to do this is to just increase the status of the people that you've gathered in the room and you know, take away kind of some of the normal leadership status differences or hierarchy differences that we think we need to have when we gather when in fact we may not need to. It's the culmination of those five conditions that fuel that sense of this, this gathering or this change effort being engaging, pulling me in as an audience and making it feel personalized and made for me. 
I get that. I think that's really good. And I think it's a great kind of checklist to have. So how do you, if I'm the one, say I'm the one who's going to deliver this, how do you then prepare me to actually make sure that all of those land? Because it's not just about the slide deck and the, you know, the, the speech. How do you prepare me to actually ensure that I'm hitting and I'm landing on all of those? Yeah, so we're, we're adjusting your gathering right now live. It's interesting. I think partially I'd want to understand how do you make this relevant for everybody else? So did they have any hand in creating this strategy? That's kind of one, one question I would have right off the bat, right? If it's leadership strategy versus the employee strategy, they might feel as though this is kind of a top down being given to them a compliance driven effort, as opposed to one that's engaging that they're already bought into. So I think one of the, the the best places to start is how can they help you co-create the strategy or how do you as a leader show that you've listened to them in taking their feedback or their ideas or their contributions to help develop it, develop it. Mm -hmm. Why are they important to the success of the strategy as opposed to, you know, they just have to do what you're told. Why do you need them? And I think that is the question about gathering and also the question about why we work together. Why do you need the people that you've gathered? Why do you need your employees? What role do they play? And how do you show them that you need them? Uh, how do you elevate their status so that they are really important to the success of this gathering um, and, and largely the change effort? So I think that is, that is the question to, to think about. And do you need to bring them together? What is the value of them actually being in the room and hearing the strategy from you live? Because I think question that, that, that I have in my own head is that, you know, what is the thought uh, or if the thought and the emotion that I want them to have as they leave here? So, and, and that kind of helps me to kind of shape the content and the messaging that I, that I am delivered. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So, yeah. How do I want people to feel or act or behave by the time we've left? And do they know that? Do they know what comes next? Mm -hmm. do, they, um, do they know what's expected of them? I think in a lot of gatherings that I know of and I've attended and, and, and helped coach people on, we focus very much on that one event, right? So I'm going to hone that content. I'm going to get that slide deck perfect. And then poof, magic, we never have to pick it up again. So what comes next? Yeah. How do you aid the follow on? What do you send out afterwards? How do you get people talking about it? Uh, you have to show them that path because largely the way that we gather is the way that we go about change. Yeah. So, so I think can, it's, yeah, yeah, it is kind of future, future pacing. What, what actually happens beyond that? Just, just interesting when you were talking about that. And, and I think you touched on it in, in terms of environment. And one of the things that I have found working with teams is that we want to get a team together and they're working as a team. I am increasingly paying more and more attention to the environment of the room that we have. I mean, I think a number of years ago, I probably paid less attention to it, but I, found, I find now in, in more recent years that that environment is really, really important um, to the success of the, uh, of the event. Is that something that, that, that you talk about? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that is the, the main value add of a leader is creating the environment for people to do their best work, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the employees that are bringing the knowledge and, and in a lot of ways, the content. So my job is to make sure, does this environment fuel that effort? If we want to be kind of nerdy for a moment, we might recall that there is, you know, the, the, the formula that behavior is a function of person and the environment, right? So the behavior that I see someone do is a function of not just who they are, but the environment that they're in. And a lot of times we kind of, we forget that and, and just focus on the person or blame the person or blame the content. And that doesn't necessarily help us very much. So yeah, that's really where like, you know, Lewin's equation is, is super useful to us to recall our main role is in that environment. And therefore it's these five conditions that matter just as much, if not more than the content that we're sharing. Okay. And if, if you're looking at it from, um, you know, for, for many of the leaders that uh, would be listening to this podcast, what skills must the, the leader learn in order to really optimize and leverage these gatherings? I think the main one that comes to mind 
is, you know, how to connect with people, <laughs> how to sort of make your message closer or how to erase the distance between you and the people that are around you. I think largely though, before we get in kind of these skills, I think it really stems from a, a mindset, right? So if we think about the people that are quote unquote skilled at gathering and skilled at creating these engaged gathering, it, it's because uh, they believe a certain thing about the people that they're with. And what they believe is that those people are capable and confident and have the answer themselves as opposed to me as a leader needing to provide that answer all the time or that they need me or I'm the hero. So it's, it's a shift in our mindset between I'm there to provide the answer and I'm there instead to create the conditions and the environment for the people I've gathered to create the answer themselves. And that's kind of why I'm pushing on this strategy session of, is it really engaging? Is it, is it, or is it just informing? Because those engaged gatherings are one, ones where the audience and the employees walk away feeling like they had this aha and they had the answer and they were doing most of the work. So that is, that is the shift in leadership. That is sort of the, the question of the moment. And that's the, the first place to start in thinking about, is this a skill that I want to develop? What do I believe about the people that I've gathered uh, and starting there instead? You talk about I've been out, the questions I've been asking you have been very much about, you know, the, the, the leader or the, the person who's speaking and, you know, what they need to do with the group. But also there's an important element of actually getting, you know, the audience, for want of a better term, how do you get the audience to connect to each other in that environment? Because that's pretty important too, isn't it? We're social creatures, as we said, and I think social learning is very important um, in a lot of ways to helping messages spread and stick, but also learning from and with each other. It's more how we learn in companies than just what we think. Formal learning is, is not as effective in a lot of ways as kind of we might assume or presume. So I think th the main differences here are pull versus push. Push gatherings or push change efforts are ones where your employees or your audience is pretty passive. They're just sitting, listening, sort of passive consumers of content versus pool gatherings where they are active, they are co-creating the experience with you. Doesn't mean they're on the stage with you, right? Doesn't mean that they're you know, on stage with the comedian telling her jokes, that's not, that's not it. Um, but rather you're using their energy and their ideas to help fuel what you're doing on stage or in the gathering. So one suggestion that I have or one tip I often give is give people time to digest what they're hearing. So if you've got a very content heavy session and that's fine, I'm not saying you don't do that, but they're not going to remember it, uh, use it unless they've had time to process it and make the connection to what's important to them. So give them that time. Say, hey, you know, take a minute or so or two minutes to turn to the person next to you and, and give them a prompt. So what are you hearing in this? What's relevant to you? What stands out? Pick your favorite prompt and just see what happens. And oftentimes, People just talk and talk and talk and talk if you invite them to do so and don't force them to do it. Um, and so I think that it's a small gesture and it's not super forced, but people want to connect and they want to take part. So give them that, that opportunity. You know, it's interesting because all the time we've been talking, I have in my head, I have kind of this picture of, you know, a group of people in a, in a room in an auditorium, whatever it might be, but you know, we are in, the, in the, the, the midst of the whole kind of coronavirus challenge. And of course, gatherings and organizations are making sure that there are no physical gatherings. But there are going to be many requirements for, you know, in those organizations for virtual gatherings. What is different about the virtual to the face-to-face? -face? Well, the channel is different. I mean, that's sort of the obvious the obvious difference, right? Um, and I think one of the great things about technology is it allows us to share the, the content on our own. So, you know, watch it at your, at your leisure, at your leisure. And in a lot of ways, I think these virtual gatherings or the, the rise of technology allows us to sort of push out content and create kind of one size fits all gatherings. And that means the opportunity of our organizations is to how do we still feel that connection that's necessary for people to be engaged by the material because we don't change because of information alone, right? Um, there's a lot of motivation intrinsically that we need in order to sort of use the information and want to be changed by it. So the question in my mind that I'm really pondering right now is 
how do companies still fuel that connection? And it's back to your earlier point, it may seem like, are they really working? <laughs> if we just say, hey, talk to someone about this email or this slide deck or this message. But I think it's very valuable for people to be able to put things in their own words and have the time to process it and digest it and, and challenge it and play with information. It's how it becomes real to us and relevant to us and ours. So I, I think that's, the channel is different obviously, but the great thing now is I think we're seeing the desire and need for people to still connect and maybe seeing that the purpose of gatherings all along hasn't necessarily been just to give content, but to fuel that connection. It has all come down to connection, doesn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, that's really what we're talking about, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, and, and, and I think that the, all the organizations that I've gone, I've never got into any organization where they've said, you know something, communication is brilliant in this organization. It's never, it's never happened to me. So this whole issue of communication, effective communication, and how we optimize these gatherings. And I know that, you know, you've worked with, with some huge companies in, you know, Silicon Valley and elsewhere. And uh, it's, it's a big challenge to all of us. And it's something that we need to grow and develop, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hard. I mean, I think it's interesting when people say we don't communicate well. I, I think that's a, what I'd call a, a fat word, which is there's a lot to unpack there that I, there's a lot underneath, right? So is it a symptom of a bigger problem? Potentially, maybe, I don't know. The interesting place to start is let's, let's start with our gatherings because that is one of our huge communication channels and methods. And maybe that's a symptom for why people aren't as engaged as we think that they are or, you know, some other some some other interesting challenge. Yeah, and it it can. I mean, you're right. It's 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 a very big statement, and there's also there can be a lot about culture. There can be a lot about values. Uh, there it can be a lot about transparency. All sorts of things kind of beneath that. But I think that you know the the organisations who really do focus on getting the communication right and utilising the gatherings, uh, as you refer to them, in in the most appropriate way, they're the organisations that are really kind of loosening up and are being are able to progress and move forward in a much more effective way. So, so Lindsay, before we, we wrap up, and you can tell people how they can get in touch with you. Two questions for every guest. One is a book that you have, would select as having a significant impact upon you and why. Can you share with us what book that might be? Yeah, so the, the book is... Uh, Give and Take by Adam Grant. And it's interesting. We've been talking about connection and conditions instead of content. And this is, I think, a perfect example of that. I love the content of the book, but it, it came to mind as the book that's meant the most to me because of the, the conditions around how I found it and, and what it means to me personally. So yeah, fantastic book and, uh, and one that everyone should read if they, if they haven't already. Yeah, I, I have read it. It's a few years since I read it and, and, and I agree with you. It's, it's a great book and it's, it is actually one of those books that one can take out again and read and get something more from it. The other question I ask, because I'm always fascinated by uh, rituals of successful people. I mean, they can be very different, but I'm just curious, what are yours and uh, what do they do for you? Yeah, this question always gives me pause because it makes me think I need better rituals or more rituals. <laughs> I think one of the important rituals is coffee. I don't know how to function without it. I don't really know uh, what, I what I would do. I think more seriously, though, one of the rituals is being outside or, or exercising or being in, in nature. I have to do that every single day. And I know that when I need to think about something deeply, I need to go for a walk. So that is a, a ritual that's very important to me and one that I, I wouldn't really know how to, to live without. Fantastic. That, that really is good. Lindsay, thank you so much. Where can people get in touch with you? And uh, we will have everything in the show notes, but if they're listening right now, how could they reach out and get in touch with you at this moment? Sure. Yeah. So they can find me on my website, which is lindsaykaplan.com or LinkedIn or, or Twitter. And I would say just one request. I don't want to presume I have all the answers, right? I think that is, we've been talking about leaders having answers and finding versus finding them or sourcing them. So true to that, if your listeners have examples of gatherings or change efforts that stuck, if you said, hey, my leadership team brings us together in compelling ways and I want to tell you about it, I would love to hear from them because there's a lot to learn more about this topic. So uh, reach out and, and let's connect. That's so true. And I tell you something, Lindsay, the longer I do this work, the more I realize I don't know. 
<laughs> so, it's, it's great. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoyed that. I know it'll be hugely beneficial to our leaders, but thank you for taking the time to be with us on the Winning Teams podcast. My pleasure.